B-52 pilot Heath White ran his first marathon in Diego Garcia. He's seen a lot, experienced a lot, but his toughest challenge may have been when he learned that he and his wife were about to be the parents of a child with Down syndrome. I was just terrified, you know, and how it reflected on me and and just all types of stuff whenever we found out. Then after Paisley was born, he did an about face. Okay. She's the best baby you could ask for. And realizing that, guilt set in with this father. I felt bad about that, about how I'd felt for nine months, not enjoying the, not enjoying her, uh, or looking forward to her really getting here that much. And so I just wanted to let everybody know that I was proud of her. Ready to go train? So he set out to include Paisley in his next marathon. He recently competed in the Little Rock Marathon, pushing Paisley in a stroller for most of the 26.2 miles, then carrying her to the finish line. Didn't slow down because I had an angel in front of me pulling me along the whole way. So people cheering for her and everything. So it, it was a, by far my most, the most fun I've had. Heath hopes not only to alleviate his guilt and develop a closer relationship with Paisley, but step by step to increase awareness of Down syndrome. In the beginning, uh, you think about everything, you know, how your whole life is going to change and that, you know, this baby's going to be with us forever, you know, and, you know, how's that going to affect retirement and everything, and it's just one day at a time. Accepting Paisley as she is is no longer a concern for this father. He's focused now on not putting limits on what she can do. I want whatever she wants, you know, give her, give her the opportunity to, to, you know, be normal, whatever that may be. The reasoning behind Louisiana's new law concerning scrap metal dealers is simple. Uh, help the police locate and uh, find the criminals. How does the new law affect people other than scrap metal dealers and folks looking to sell the alloys? It means thieves will be less inclined to steal air conditioners and car parts that contain valuable metals. Under the new law, dealers must photograph the metal being sold, record information about the vehicle used to transport the metal to the dealer, make a copy of the seller's ID, and obtain a thumbprint from the person selling the metal. As the price of metals has skyrocketed over the last few years, that's made thieves more brazen and bold. They've targeted electricians, plumbers, anyone in the construction business, but not just them. They've also targeted homes and individuals to steal the air conditioners for the aluminum coils. The new system isn't cheap for scrap metal dealers. But I'd say uh, 100,000 for all yards. Dealers are required to submit a report to local law enforcement via the internet so police can access the information to investigate crimes involving metal theft, a crime that's become more and more popular in recent years. Uh, it's went up significantly. Aluminum, copper, and brass prices have gone up in the last few years, and one reason? Overseas ammunition manufacturers are grabbing up the metals as soon as they hit the market. With the war and different things, so yeah, ingot makers and all have been uh, more hungry, so to speak. So Harley will generate out of somebody. If you like the sound of this, you'll definitely like the sound of this. This has got to put, got to be in Harley's top 10 anywhere in the country size-wise. We're not the largest, but I, we're close. Bumpus Harley Davidson opened one of the biggest Harley dealerships in the country right here in Memphis today really a thrill for us. It gives us a lot more room so we can have more variety of, you know, Harleys, everybody customizes their own thing. Maybe now we can carry enough to really give everybody a lot of variety for what they do. Being that this is the grand opening of this brand new massive Harley Davidson dealership, I got in the spirit and bought me a brand new Harley Davidson t-shirt. Clothing, pinball machines, uh, a little bit of everything. So many bikers showed up for the new store's opening today, it looked more like a bike rally. Hopefully it means we've been taking care of people pretty good for a while, and hopefully they, uh, they trust us to keep on taking care of them. They want to come by and see it. It's been terrific. The response we've had on the new motorcycle has been super, and used bikes. In hog heaven with photojournalist James Murphy, Tom D's Fox 13 News. It's just a haven for crime and it's a haven for drugs. It's a health hazard. It's a total health hazard, this area. 
The area is Harvard Yard, a housing development just one mile north of Sunset, Arkansas. Take a look around. Piles of garbage, overgrown weeds, and abandoned houses line the streets. But that's not all. The rodents are, are, are large and, and numerous. <laughs> Benitria Gist has lived in this community for two years. She's fed up with what she calls the substandard living conditions in Harvard Yard. In 2003, people do not have to live like this in, in these dilapidated areas. So Gist decided to get her neighborhood cleaned up. But that's been difficult because the community is on its own. It's unincorporated, so they don't have a mayor, a city council, that kind of government to, to help enforce any laws out here. And while officials in Crittenden County could enforce the owners of these abandoned homes to take care of their property, Judge Melton Holt says it would cost money nobody seems to want to pay. They're not going to fix the houses, they're not going to pay the bill. So, you know, the county's going to be out whatever money it takes to do that. So until somebody decides to take responsibility for the demise of this area, there isn't much GIST and her neighbors can do. Until the trash is picked up and potentially some of these houses either put back in living condition or tore down, uh, that problem is going to still exist. Her husband Randy went above and beyond this year to give local children a real scare for Halloween this year. They also hope it will help them deal with some heartbreaking news they got two years ago. Over a month ago, Laura decided she wanted to go all out for Halloween this year. So she and her husband got help from family, friends, and even their five dogs to throw a loud and scary <laughs> Halloween party in their front yard. Yeah, I hit the big 31 this year, so I, I told my husband, I said, you know, I said, I don't want to be a grown-up this year. I said, I want to act like a big kid in the yard. It's not like I'm going to chase you. They spent over $2,000 on all their decorations, but Lori says it's definitely worth it. We've been trying for about eight years, you know, to have children, and we hadn't had any luck. And we've got a lot of friends that have had, you know, young ones, and they're getting of age. So we decided we just really, really wanted to put on a good kids' bash. So we went to the extreme. Since the couple hasn't been able to have children of their own, Lori hopes this will help fill the void they feel. We love children. You know, that is our heart, you know. And so the more kids that come, the happier we'll be because we're going to put on a show for them. Action! Hey, is this a movie set in New York or L.A.? Is this the back lot of a Hollywood production studio? The answer is no. It's Shreveport. Yes, even this cutting-edge wave pool where the movie The Guardian was shot is, believe it or not, in Caddo Parish. 25 movie and TV projects have been shot in northwest Louisiana since 2005, bringing in more than $300 million. Who knew the Red River town would become Hollywood South? It's really exciting. I mean, this year we've had 20 productions along um, that are either in production or have already been produced. Uh, the community is supportive, uh, excited to have the projects here. We just have uh, a wonderful time filming in Shreveport. Uh, it's, it's really been a, a big success story. Lambton Enox is a veteran movie producer who's brought his California business to the Bayou State. People here are great. Uh, folks are very friendly. Um, they are, uh, they, they let the actors be, uh, you know, go out to dinner. They don't bother them. Um, very, very nice and kind. So uh, generally, everybody's been very happy to be here. Shreveport Bossier became a hotbed of Hollywood activity following Hurricane Katrina. Movies that were shooting in New Orleans in August of 2005 had to immediately relocate. So what happened is post Katrina, because so many projects came to Shreveport, you had crew members, much like myself, who came here, had a good experience and ended up staying. Production trailers like this are now commonplace in the Shreveport area. This happens to be the lighting trailer for the movie Wonderful World with Matthew Broderick. When I ask producers how come the Monroe, West Monroe area can't have a major movie, they say it's because that area just can't meet their needs. It boils down to providing the crew and extras. One film can require some 230 people to be grips, assistants, lighting, hair, makeup, etc. Some of our productions are doing intern programs to grow crew. We actually have had 100 crew move from um, out of state, primarily the LA area. So that all helps. 
be in touch with what's happening over the whole state. The Northeast Louisiana Film and Video Association is working hard to lure lucrative film and TV productions to this area. They're encouraging area colleges and local production companies to train a movie savvy workforce. This being a right to work state, we are in the process of trying to train people and bring them along and put them on to productions where they can gain experience. The Northeast Louisiana Film and Video Association sells the Washington Parish area as a location with a variety of landscapes and a quaint downtown. Jennifer Parsons, the president of the association, says movie scouts love it. We just need to show the Hollywood producers that we can provide them with great restaurants, entertainment, and a viable crew base. Then it should be just a matter of time before the Washita Parish area makes a big splash on the movie scene. Tammy Arender, Fox 14 News.